Hello, my name is Mike Vetter. I was born in Naples, Italy, and raised in Germany my entire life until I graduated high school. This is where I got my passion and love for cars. I remember seeing my first Lamborghini Countach at a car show in Frankfurt, Germany. And I always thought to myself, that would be something awesome to have. My dad told me that the car was very expensive, cost more than your average house, so I'd have to work awfully hard to get one. Um, I kind of stored that in my memory banks and tooled along. Graduated high school in Germany, came to Florida to go to college. I went to the University of Central Florida to get a dis business degree. While I was in school there, I found a Lamborghini car body at a car show, and I purchased this car body knowing nothing about cars, never taken a single automotive class. Um, it took me about a year and a half to turn this vehicle into a finished, completed running and driving Lamborghini on a Fiero. That Countach was my initial start into the automotive world. Um, I, I, I'm self-taught on how to do all of this stuff because I would take that Countach to garages to have somebody do body work and they told me that you couldn't do this type of body work on fiberglass and make it look that nice. So I had to struggle through it and figure it out on my own. Um, really, all of the people that gave the the difficult input into building that car is what drew me to have to learn how to do it all myself. Over the years I have perfected this craft and uh, this is the epitome of everything I have done, this vehicle right here. This is the extraterrestrial vehicle, remote opening doors, um, gull wing door hinges. I'm proud of those. I've always liked Lamborghini style door hinges. They've always been a real pain in the butt. I've figured out by pacing them apart in gull wing style they'll open and close flawlessly every time. This particular car has a back seat, which is great for my little six-year-old. I need the extra room. The two-seater sports cars uh, no longer suffice. The, the body style of this car started off as just a shell, and I literally built the drivetrain up from underneath the shell. So I built the shell without really knowing what I was going to put under it, but I, I basically added features to it to kind of fancy it up. I would kind of stand back and look at it, like these scoops were not originally on it, I added those. A lot of people ask me if they cool the engine. This car is actually front engine, so these are more for looks, but they do actually run air back into the exhaust. Um, I found some cool plasma plates on eBay, and I thought they would make awesome tail lights. So I've got some really unique tail lights, which uh, the police have not bothered me for yet. <laughs> um, there's a rear view camera. This is the reverse uh, lights. This is the back bumper actually off of a Porsche Boxster. The whole thing is set in there, so it actually has some safety features like that. A lot of people ask how hard it is to change the, the tires or put air in them. Uh, putting air in them is not so bad to take them off. It does take about 15 minutes apiece to remove the two covers so you can access the tires. There's three bolts all around the circle and pull that off. I have a really awesome uh, machinist who makes me a lot of beautiful billet aluminum pieces. And he's come up with some neat things. These are some awesome shock covers and pedals, of course, fabricated shift knob. Um, one of the most difficult features to complete on this car was all of the glass. Um, that's one thing that I found that has set myself apart from other fabricators is a lot of people use Lexan for the windows. Um, it took me about six years to find a good company to make my own glass that's DOT stamped, safety glass, the laminated windshield. Um, I found a very hard time finding anyone to make these parts in the United States, so these parts actually come from Peru, where there's a glass company that will still do basically private glass. Um, this is the custom assigned VIN number for this vehicle. I went through a stringent paperwork and inspection process here in Florida so the car could be registered, titled, and insured as what it is, a custom-built ETV. Um, this car was completed in 2012, so this is titled as a 2012. Um, at nighttime, you can see there's some fancy LED lights. This thing lights up and puts on a nice light show behind the grills, inside the front grill underneath, and inside these rear scoops. Um, another neat feature are the, the round power windows, which I basically hacked up a, the tracks from another window, uh, actually a, a Chevy product, and used my round glass and I made it work in there. It took a little bit of engineering, but I, I like to try to challenge myself every time I build something. Uh, the air suspension, I guess, would be another unique feature. Um, a lot of people talk about, will the car go over speed bumps? It'll go over no problem, I have remote controls, air suspension so uh, when I walk up to it I can raise it up or show people a lot of people ask you know where are the wheels so I I love to park it down low I drop it down but notice there's not a chip or a mark on this car and I've put over 3,000 miles on it in the past year um, our family really enjoys driving it um, 
I wasn't prepared for the attention this car would draw when I built the first one, but uh, it, it literally draws more attention than any Lamborghini or Ferrari. I mean, it's positive attention. People are coming around, they're like, oh, can I take a picture? Where did it come from? How did you get the parts? And I have to explain them to them that I've custom fabricated just about every part on the car myself. I'm fortunate enough to have a 8,000 square foot facility now where we, we do all of the work in-house, um, other than the glass. Um, I'm also a stickler for building something that looks fancy and be usable. So and that's one reason I've, I, I constantly am driving it, just finding every little thing that I can to, to iron out any bugs, so to speak. And uh, I'm proud to say that you know there's, I don't I don't find any more bugs in this car anymore. <laughs> just changed the uh, seats the other day. Okay, um, so going into the interior of the vehicle, I'm six foot one and I have good, a good amount of room to be able to drive. Uh, that's one thing that's always been important to me, being taller. Um, it's not claustrophobic as some might think due to the four and a half foot wide windshield by five feet long. Um, there is no rear window or rear window area, so that's why I do have two monitors in the center. The top monitor is out of the rear window, the lower monitor Turn that on. Um, shows the lower front area, so when you pull up to a curb, you won't hit the curb. I can pull within two inches of any of those parking beacons and not hit them. That was an, that's the first feature. It's one of the features that this is the only car that I put that into, and I will be doing that more in the future. Um, otherwise, it's a it's a five-speed supercharged four-cylinder Chevy drivetrain. Um, I have a gauge right here that tells you the amount of pressure that's in the air system. Right now, it's reading 16 pounds, which means I'm I'm down really low. Uh, when I raise it up to 60 pounds, then I know I can clear just about every every obstacle. When I raise it up, you can hear the air compressor kicking on. When it needs to supply air, it'll it'll fill it up and kick off as it finishes. Um, steep gas stations, you know, where the driveway is really steep, I raise it up to about 85, and I kind of learn the, the system as I'm driving it. So at 85 pounds of pressure, I can make it into 90% of the gas stations without scraping at all. Um, the headliner in this car was probably one of the, the more difficult things to fabricate. Um, it's, it's got several panels and, of course, of course, working upside down is difficult and taking it in and out. And I actually built one of the bodies and worked on it upside down, but it's got a really cool looking headliner. A lot of people say it looks like a G5 airplane or something in there. <laughs> um, it has rear windows in the back for my little girl so she can peek her head out there. Um, it has a sunroof and, of course, the rear opening hatch area that exposes the back seats. All right, so here's the rear access area to the back seats. It's basically kind of just so that uh, you can see down in there. Um, I used to pull my little girl out of there when she was one years old and didn't want to come out of the vehicle. Now you can see uh, the seats do flip down. There's storage behind the seats. I've gone to Target and put two cases of water and $100 worth of groceries and plastic sacks back there. So there is a little bit of room. In that same area is where there are dual batteries. And I have two batteries with a boat AB switch so that I can leave all the lights on at night and all the fancy lights underneath. And if the battery runs dead, I simply flip the switch to the second battery and the car will start right up and drive away. So this is a very good example of what I do. My passion is to take somebody's picture and turn it into a working, driving piece of art. That is what I really like to do. That's why our company is called MTV Concepts. Uh, my website is mtvconcepts.com and I would love to take anybody's idea and build it into a working vehicle that would be as of quality of this one or better. Um, now that you've seen the outside of this vehicle, I'd like to take you on a quick test drive, see how it looks through the eyes of the driver. Generally not. Yeah. You got to be a little careful. Yeah. All right. You want a chocolate milkshake? Um, sure. Or something else? Uh, yeah, that'll work. Actually, I'll take a water. A water? Yeah. yeah. I'm a little parched from the okay. shoot earlier. Yeah.
Um, yes, I need a small chocolate milkshake and a bottle of water, and that'll be all. And a cup of water or a bottle of water? A bottle. Okay, your shuttle's four days. I'm sorry, your shuttle's going to be at the window. Okay. I got it, yeah, no problem. Say I was going to buy us drinks. You no, drove. No problem. <laughs> back here. TV. Wow. Awesome, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How do you get in? Oh, it's got... Uh... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. That has got to be the coolest car I've ever seen in my life. I'm sure Thank you. Get you. That oh, we are... <laughs> what kind of car is that? It's called an ETV. ETV? Is yep. it something new? It's a custom... I've custom built it from scratch. Thank you. <laughs> you as well. <laughs> wow. That is so cool. Yeah. Got a free bottle of water. Yeah. <laughs> She's so distracted by yep. the car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>